Have you ever wanted to print quality drawings straight from Rhino into the printer? Or maybe have a view you wish to print, but want to work on another drawing without affecting that view? Lucky for you, Rhino has a tool called Layout, which gives you that power. Today, we will show you how you can use that tool to boost your productivity and become an expert in using Rhino Layouts. So what is Rhino Layouts? Layouts is a tool used to arrange, annotate, and plot views, drawings, and details created in your Rhino file. And why do you want to use Rhino Layouts? So similar to Revit Sheets or AutoCAD Layouts, Rhino Layouts can be an efficient way of developing and organizing process drawings or presentation materials without making unwanted changes to other parts of the model. It is especially helpful in decluttering otherwise large files or files with multiple drawings or views you wish to print out. Without further ado, let's jump right in. Let's begin with navigating to the layout panel. The easiest way to access layouts is to simply type layout into the command bar. After this, it will prompt you with a pop-up to give the layout a name, paper size, and orientation. You can always change these options later by clicking edit under the properties tab. The icon is a color wheel in the layout view. The first helpful tip I highly recommend is changing the background color to white if you have not already. You can access this by going into Options, Appearance, Colors, Viewport Colors, and Layout. There are two views in Layouts. The first is Layout View, which is the default view displayed when you create a new layout. If you change the layout background to white, it's easier to distinguish this from the second view, which is Detail View, or the view that allows you to edit the model and its contents. You can think of editing the detail view as editing what is in the Rhino file, and the layout view as editing what is displayed on the paper or PDF itself. To access the detail view, simply double click within the boundaries of the detail view's rectangle as outlined in black on the view. You can exit detail view and re-enter layout view by double clicking again. In the detail view, you can edit your model and its contents, and this will carry on to other layouts and other views. On the properties panel, a set of new options would appear to allow you to change the name of the detail view, choose whether you want to lock the view, change its scale, and adjust the camera and camera target options. You can change the scale right here, but if you want to change the units displayed in either the layout or model scale, you have to go into Options, Units, and click on either the Model or Layout tab. The locking feature is great if you found a position and scale you wish to display the detail at, but do not want to make any adjustments to the view. By checking lock, you can freely zoom and move around in detail view on layouts while affecting your chosen view's position and scale. You can also change the scale and the locked property by clicking on the details boundaries. So maybe you don't want to have your detail view in the center of your paper. Well luckily, Rhino Layouts allows you to do that. When it comes to moving detail views, you may have noticed that the detail view does not extend beyond the boundary lines. This is because detail views are snapshots of what is in your Rhino file. Enter layout view and you can freely adjust this rectangle. You can also insert multiple detail views in one layout. First, go to layout view and type in detail viewport in the command bar. Type add or simply the letter A in the prompt. Follow the rest of the prompt to create a new detail view in the layout. It is important to note that every detail view is independent of each other. So when your drawing is complete and polished and you want to print, simply type print or press Ctrl P to access the printing screen. Here you want to make sure that you have the right file type or destination and size of paper matching the layout. Resolution, output type, and output color are optional and depends on what format you wish to print the content at. The most crucial part is found under the View and Output Scale tab. Make sure your view selects the correct layout and has the layout button checked. If your selected paper print size matches your layout size, then simply change the scale to 1 to 1. Once you have the settings you want, hit Print. 
So those are the basics of Rhino layouts. It may take some time to integrate it into your workflow, but soon you can print quality drawings without the hassle of finding the right scale or views every time you want to reprint a drawing after working on it. In the next part of the tutorial, I will cover topics that are useful to know, especially if you want to become proficient in using Rhino layouts. And I have found that these tips can improve your workflow efficiency, graphics, and organization. Perhaps the most important skill, for Rhino in general, is understanding and managing your layers and layer properties. This is also true in layouts, where it can get very confusing. Don't worry, it is easier than you think. In the first part of the video, we went over the difference between detail view and layout view. For layer management and properties, it is the same thing. You may notice that when you are in layouts, there is a new set of options highlighted with a grey background identical to the settings available to you in the normal layer screen. As a refresher, here are what each of those options are in order from left to right. The light bulb is visibility. The lock is toggling editing capability. The square color is your display color. The circle is the material assigned to that layer. Line weights. The diamond color is print color. And the last one is print width. These new options are exactly the same, however, they only apply to the specific layout itself, hence the word layout before their names. Think of the first section as global properties, which applies to all views and layouts, and the second section as local properties, which only applies to this specific layout. The next part can be confusing. Let's use visibility as an example. Anything you edit in the layout can be hidden by using the layout visibility button. Simple and straightforward, right? However, when you access a detail view, your local layout layers become detail layers. Here, you can toggle the visibility of anything in the model without affecting the visibility of it in other views or layouts. As you can see on the screen, even though this blue square is hidden in this particular detail view, it is still visible in another detail view and in the main model view. It is an efficient way to show items you want in a specific layout, but not in the others, and a great for organizing files with multiple drawings overlaid on top of each other. Another useful skill is understanding draw order. Draw order supports only hatches, curves, points, annotation, all forms of text other than dots, and details. There are five primary commands to know. Bring forward, bring to front, send backward, send to back, and lastly, clear draw order. Though I would caution that draw order commands may cause issues in other views as essentially you are changing their display order in relation with all objects in the file. This is why I would only recommend using this tool if your drawings are not overlaying each other or if you are using layouts extensively. Lastly is annotations. Working with text and annotations between layouts and your model can get very confusing, and the scale and sizing can be off depending on the setting you have on the annotation styles. There are two settings to keep in mind before editing the annotation styles. The first is Enable Model Space Scaling, which allows the text and annotations to scale according to the model space scale number. It scales multiplicatively with a number taking the height number which is based on the units you set in the model space, multiplied by the scale number to get the final size. Turning this on and off is up to your personal preference. I would keep this enabled if you prefer changing the scale rather than the height of each annotation. The second is Enable Layout Space Scaling, which allows the text and annotations to remain the same size proportionally to the screen as you zoom in and out in Layout's detail view. Disabling this will allow you to keep the text at the same size as it is in the model space as you zoom in and out in layouts. If you have the detail view locked, turning this on and off does not have an effect. And that will wrap it up for today's guide on Rhino layouts. Be sure to like and share the video if you found it helpful, it would greatly support this channel against the YouTube algorithm. If you want to join us on our journey, subscribe to the Emerging Architects, or visit our website which has many more helpful guides and tips. Link is in the description below. It has been a pleasure putting this guide together, see you in the next video.